My name is Dirk Kruger. I'm a macroeconomist, mainly a macroeconomist, but I have interest in public finance topics as well. I teach at the University of Pennsylvania. And my research started off with two rather distinct topics that since, since the last few years have, have been getting closer and closer to each other. So in the first strand of research, I tried to understand what shapes the income, wealth, and consumption distribution in modern economies, why they have changed fairly dramatically and um, how these changes might affect how macroeconomic aggregates change as well. So for example, I tried to answer the question whether in economies that are characterized by larger degrees of income and wealth inequality, aggregate business cycles are perhaps more severe than in economies where the distribution is more equally distributed. And then in distinct uh, uh, work, I think about major economic policy reforms and what the macroeconomic and distributional consequences are. Early in my career, I mainly worked on social security reform in economies that were rapidly aging and therefore social security had to be reformed. Lately, I've uh, become more and more interested in major tax reforms and healthcare reforms, partially because that's where uh, the most pressing uh, reform needs in, in modern societies are. And, uh, in the last few years, these two research agendas basically have merged with each other. So yesterday I presented a, a paper that basically asked the question that if you take as given the fact that the top 20% of the U.S. income and wealth uh, distribution have become much more concentrated, that begs the question how high should we tax people at the high end of the income distribution uh, when we are interested in maximizing revenue, but also when we're interested in maximizing social welfare. So this is combining both of my interests, one in distributions and macroeconomic outcomes and one in major policy policy reforms. The major advances that has have happened in the last 10 years, and Chicago is very much at the forefront of that, is uh, about up until 10 years ago, it is the case that income and especially wealth are, is very highly concentrated in the US economy. So you would hope that you have a fairly accurate data picture of how these top 1% of people actually look like. And up until, late, uh, up until recently, we, we didn't because administrative data sets, say, from the IRS or from the Social Security administrations were not available. Now they have become available, available to researchers, so now we can really precisely look who are the top 1%, what are, what are their income, and uh, with wealth it's still a little bit more difficult. What's the income dynamic? What is the, uh, what is the work that they are doing? So uh, from a data perspective, we know much more now than we did 10 years ago, just simply because data sets that the government collected but they were not available to researchers now have become available and at the same time if you want to build models of the market economy where there's lots of people interacting with each other you need powerful computers and uh, efficient numerical techniques and they have become available in the last 10-15 years as well so I think it's a very fruitful area for graduate students for example do to go into and people like Cap, uh, Greg Kaplan here at the University of Chicago are very much at the forefront of that line of line of research and you know that's partially why he has been so successful. And uh, so I think that in that area of research, there's still a lot of uh, things that we can learn. And the obvious next step would be to understand how actual policies are shaped by income and wealth distribution. So I think we are pretty good understanding what uh, economic policies have in terms of their impact. We have substantial amount of work that studies optimal formation of, of, of government policy, but how policy is actually formed in the political process and how that is affected by income and wealth distributions. For example, in unequal societies, do we get bad policy outcomes? That's something in a model-based context that's still fairly, uh, I mean, I wouldn't say unexplored. There are people working on this, but I think that's where the literature, I think, should be going, should be going next. That would be the obvious next, next step. So well, one area that I do find very exciting is to, to use the same uh, models that I'm interested in applying to uh, developed economies and uh, uh, apply them in the development context. So there's uh, researchers like Bob Townsend, Rob Townsend from MIT, used to be in Chicago, that basically uh, tries to write on structural model of village economies. He has collected in very interesting data from Thailand uh, to ask the same question that I would be interested for developing uh, for developed economies, for developing economies. So this is work that I'm an ardent consumer of, not a producer of, but in in a way, it's a very natural way for, from my perspective to address development question in the same way that I would address uh, macro and fiscal policy questions in the, in the US or the European context.